Kia ora koutou. welcome to another edition of South Pacific Muscle. Today we are joined by one of the newest IFBB pros on the planet, Yusuf Yusuf. So huge welcome to you, man, and, and massive congratulations for the weekend. Thank you, guys. Hey, guys, how's it going? Um, yeah, it was a, it was a hectic weekend, um, but we, we pulled through and we made it, we survived, and uh, here we are right now. Um, yeah. What, a, what an elation, you know, what a, what a feeling to, um, to get that card, man. And how have you oh, it's, it's, it's uh, honestly, man, it's such a, like, it's such a big relief. I mean, like I've been training since I was 15 years old. Like I got my gym membership from my parents when I was 15 and my brother was always into bodybuilding. He's a few years older than me. So, you know, he used to always watch the Ronnie Coleman videos and, you know, Doran Yates, et cetera. And I used to look at that and be like, oh, 50, 50. And then, about a few months into training, I'm like, you know what? I want to get to that level one day, like the pro cards level and compete in the pro league. And yeah, we got that card and now we feel real good. You know, now we're just motivated more than ever, to be honest. Awesome, bro. Hey, um, what I might do is just get us, get you to tell us and tell the people out there um, a bit about yourself, where you came from, what your background was. Yep, Talk us yep, no worries. So um, I'm originally, I'm Palestinian. But I'm born, I was born in Jordan. I moved to New Zealand when I was three years old, and I pretty much grew up here, so I can say I'm, I'm a Kiwi, pretty much. Um, yeah, I've been here ever since. Haven't really left the country ever since. Um, grew up a bit in a tough environment, let's just say that, uh, financially and stuff, so didn't really have the option to really fly out and stuff. Um, yeah, and then one thing led to another. Started training, like I said, at 15. Uh, went to school, lived out in West Auckland, moved to Central Auckland. And then, yeah, uh, got into university, um, finished my degree, uh, finished a bachelor's of ph pharmacy. Oh, wow. And, wow. Yeah. That's so ironic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, I, like, I did it because I was like, I wanted to get into, I wanted to do pharmacy to do a postgraduate in uh, medicinal chemistry and get into drug design. Mm, mm, but then mm, however sorry. once once university started rolling around because my sister's a medicinal chemist my mom's a biochemist etc cetera, etc cetera. so getting into the degree and stuff a few years in i was like actually maybe i could actually use this degree to actually help me with my bodybuilding just understanding the whole physio physiology anatomy biochemistry of receptors and all that stuff and food and etc 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 and honestly it's been nothing but but positives ever since we've graduated and stuff yeah mm. So what are you doing yourself work-wise nowadays? So right now I'm working part-time. I lost my job during COVID. Um, obviously we had a pharmacy, like the recession and stuff mm. with the whole, you know, not many people around. But ever since then I started, I just got to pick up a new job. I'm working up in Walkworth. <laughs> Even though I live in Hobsonville, so I'm making the road trips up, up and down. <laughs> but I'm only working part-time up there. Yep. And then the rest of the time I'm just um, running the business. Uh, so I have my own nutrition and training business, Team Taban. Um, been doing that for a year now, but we're actually going to launch the proper business and website this Sunday. So hopefully awesome. the plan is to work with that and reduce the hours in the pharmacy moving forward. Yeah. What if you, uh, what if, yeah. What do you take a minute to, what do you take a minute to promote that? So it's, uh, it's, yeah, absolutely. Uh, on Sunday. Cool. Cool. So this Sunday guys, um, obviously I'm the head coach of team Taban. Um, we have an Instagram page, which I'll be putting on my bibliography on my Instagram page. And yeah, I just got two competitors I'm waiting for after this Saturday. One's competing at the NZ Naturals IFBB in Physique and Classic. And the other one's competing in the New Zealand GPC Powerlifting Champs. And they're both looking like they're going to do quite well. So I'm just waiting for that, just that final mark, just to uh, close off the year yeah. and see all the accomplishments. And then on Sunday, we'll launch with hopefully good news from their end and my end. And then, yeah, we're good to go and we're all set to go from there. So stay tuned, team. Awesome, man. So su supplement company or uh, nutritional training advice, nu coaching? Tra training and nutrition and PT. Yep. Yeah. Hey, um, I just spotted yeah. something over your shoulder there, you said. On What's the wall that? there. I just spotted something uh, over your shoulder. <laughs> Everyone, uh, yeah, yeah. look at that card. It's, uh, it's in front of my... It's in front of the treadmill because I'm just back on the cardio now. So I'm just like, <laughs> don't get fat. You get, you're a classic. You got to stay in shape year round. You know what I mean? So... Just, just keeping there a bit motivation because obviously, I've been 18 weeks, I've been cardio at minimum one hour a day from the first day of 18 weeks ago. So I'm just like, you get a bit bored of it. So I just leave it there, and I'm like, well, 
there's the results. Now let's see what we can that do. That doesn't fit in your wallet anyway, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> no, unfortunately not, no. Hey, um, classic bodybuilding is um, relatively new to the scene. Um, we've had some, some real uh, success stories come out of New Zealand, but to a lot of people and to a lot of people that have been around for a long time, there's probably not that much understanding of it. And like, when I, if someone said to me, what's classic bodybuilding, straight away I think about the 60s, 70s and 80s, probably Steve Reeves through to probably about Lee Haney and, and that kind of era and some of those physiques that were around then. And, and one of the things I immediately thought of was um, the Grecian ideal. So there's a bit of an old school word there. It's um, a term, well, it's actually, a, it's, a, it's a measurement system where the Greeks worked out what the ideal male physique would look like and Eugene Sando apparently, so the man who's on the Olympia statue, which you may have one day, um, he was apparently the first to achieve that um, Grecian ideal. And then the other sort of things I thought about was the Apollonian versus the Herculean physique and the, the Apollonian one is sort of the the ectomorph tending to mesomorph, the um, very much a sort of a Frank Zane type build versus the Herculean, you know, Yadorian Yates, the mass monsters that sort of, I guess, uh, mesomorphic towards endomorphic, the big heavy set guys. And so I guess um, the classic class really suits some competitors, but there must be some real subtle differences in the way you attack your training to achieve a really balanced physique that has that real aesthetic appeal to it. So do you want to sort of talk us through the, the differences from perhaps traditional bodybuilding training and the way that you know most of us have, have always trained versus what you needed to do to refine a physique that would win a pro card yeah, sorry no, just to jump in there for a second sorry Yusuf to interrupt you there the, uh, the Grecian ideal that was the, um, the you were supposed to have a bicep that matched your neck that matched your calf is that, mm, is mm. that correct? I, I remember I remember reading about that a couple of years ago in a Teen Nation article and I remember reading it and it was like your wrist has to be an equivalent portion to your forearm mm. And your bicep tricep has to match your calf and your quad hammy has to be a certain ratio to your hip and your shoulder and stuff. And I'm not reading that and I'm just like, man, that looks like it's hard to achieve, but it looks like if you, <laughs> if you can nail it, if you can nail it, you look on point. So I do, I 100% recall what you're saying, the whole yeah. group, uh, the idea and stuff, yeah. So I just want to talk us through the way, the, the subtle difference in the way you train. Be interested to hear that. Yeah, so my training style, um, it's very, I train more volume based mm -hmm. um, and everything is time under tension because I find like for classic physique and stuff, especially how, like training throughout this prep, right? Training throughout this prep, I'll always keep majority of my session volume and I'll always pre-exhaust always the muscle before I hit a compound movement. That way, when I get to the compound movements, example, let's say I'm going to bench. I haven't benched in months. Yeah. But let's say I'm going to do a barbell bench press. I'll hit maybe four sets of 20 to 30 reps on cable flies, really contracting and squeezing, you know, just to really activate all the fibers from top to bottom of the chest. So the moment I'm on the bench, the moment I'm on the bench, when I'm moving, it's not a full power movement anymore. It's just carrying on that contraction moving into the chest. Same thing with shoulders, you know, we'll do laterals or rear delts before we get to shoulder pressing. And then, yeah, um, abs, abs definitely, like one thing I, for classic, high volume abs, not heavy work, about two to three times a week, about 100 to 150 reps ongoing every week, just to keep, you know, that waist real tight. Um, no do you feel like... Do you feel like the uh, the volume training that you do is a reflection of your muscle physiology that you started with, your background in sports prior to lifting, that you're a, a more of an endurance athlete rather than a power athlete, or is it just something you've specifically done to try and sculpt your physique in a classic way? No, so so I've been I've been training since I was 15. I'm 26 now. I turned 26 in July. Um, I used to box and I used to kickbox and I used to play rugby and I play competed in powerlifting in the IPF and I actually set the Oakland records for my age back in 2011 for the squat bench and deadlift and the total in the 93 kilo class and what I realized is after that time and going through uni I used to train um, with more heavier loads lower reps you know in the four to six six to eight rep range and honestly I found that it didn't as I started getting into bodybuilding it wasn't really helping you know like the quad sweep 
the hemi drop, etc. It wasn't really helping the the delt pop and the arm sweep, the tricep, bicep peak, etc. So refined things. Had a talk with our, my coach Denver, Denver Chandy, and he trains volume based. So when when I started working with him, we had a we had like a sort of like a test, a few test training sessions for like let's say four to six weeks to get a feel. And once we started pulling back on the lower reps, pre-exhausting, going more higher volume approach, I actually found it worked really well for me in my, and I found also that for a lot of my clients, the whole volume time under tension approach works more than just slapping weights on the machine or on the bar and just moving it for the sake of moving it. I know there's that whole thing that they talk about, you know, sometimes overloading the muscle and getting that hormonal response or testosterone, the growth hormone, synthesizing your insulin and stuff. But personally, I found that you can achieve that at the same rate of just keeping a time under tension. I'm sure you guys know that as well. You know, the studies, they come out, they say that you don't have to always take it to failure, even though we do take it to failure. <laughs> but you don't have to always have that loading. And that way you can actually, for me as well, save the joints, save the lower back. Because well, I you actually, can always, sorry, you can always find a study that says uh, both, both sides of any uh, argument. So I think uh, what you've said there is you just tried things, found out what worked for you and for most of your clients. Uh, everybody's experimenting, uh, they're, they're, you're your own science experiment, right? 100%, 100%. And then through trying different things, you know, you can start tailoring, you know, something specific to your body type and your training. And then from that, and looking at your other clients and how they respond as well, you can sort of start picking and choosing what will work and what doesn't. And yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Um, have I missed anything? <laughs> Uh, look, hey, that was really, really, really interesting. And, um, you know, you, you have a very different approach to the style that I train, probably more similar to Mike than myself. But what I did notice was you talked about the activation exercises first. And, and I think that's something that many people forget. They sort of do a, a bit of a half ass sort of a warm up. But for me, I've got the mentality that when I go into the gym, I never do a sloppy rep. Every rep is there for a purpose. And if, I'm, if it hasn't got a purpose, I'm not doing that rep. And I get in there and those activation exercises, it's all about the contraction and the recruit, recruiting of fibers. And you know that when you hit that, you know, your first lot of working sets, once you've done your, maybe I do three activation um, uh, sets, but when you hit it, you're firing on all cylinders and you're recruiting as the maximum amount of fiber that you possibly can. 100 percent i fully fully agree on that um like yeah like for squats example like give you let's say example leg day um so usually i was training legs twice a week i was doing a quad day and a hemi glute day but what i found was that i when i dropped that to once a week it worked my legs grew way faster the hemi and the quad and in that regard what we did was like if we're gonna squat for example i would do or denver would make me do about literally five to seven sets in the 20 rep range of leg extension, squeezing every rep. Then we'll do a massive 50 rep drop set. Then we'll go and squat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's Monday night leg days are killer. We actually have a video coming out to like show a day in prep and that leg day and stuff. And it's just, it's horrific. Yeah. Wow. Um, so yeah, and when we get to squats, like just going to your style of training, Nate, uh, how you were saying that it's quite different. I'm more like my... I do have heavy sets in there, but I'll have, example, I'll have one heavy set in the whole session and that'll just be as a top off. So I'll do on squats, example, after leg extensions, I'll do sets of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, till I can't do 10. When I can't do 10, that's the cutoff weight. And then I try and do 10 on that or eight to 10 next week. Once I can get 10 on that, then I increase the weight. Therefore it's safer on the joints and therefore the midsection, the ob just from a classic perspective, the midsection, the oblique club don't have to overcompensate and get thicker because you're yeah. staying in that volume range and therefore it's a bit more safe on the body as well. What other techniques are you using to keep, because I know the midsection is absolutely critical in your class. I mean, what we're probably seeing now in the open bodybuilding is that there's more of a focus on a tighter waist than guys that have got a blockier waist are starting to get marked down. But in classic, it's absolutely critical. What other things are you doing to ensure that you don't thicken up through the obliques and, and that stuff around with when you're working in those, the big compound exercises? How do you get around that? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So what I do is, a good question, what I do is I don't always have the compounds in. 
So example, I haven't benched in months. I haven't deadlifted in months. I haven't squatted in about six to eight weeks. Um, and what I'll do is, is I'll change the exercises to get the same loading pattern via a different sort of range of motion. So example, squats, you know, we all know they're glute and quad specific. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is on that leg day, I'll break it down and do a front uh, Smith machine front squat in the volume range just to keep that constant tension on the quads. And therefore you don't have to go as heavy keeping the waist in. Yeah. And then I'll probably do something more glute specific like a hip thrust with a partial range of motion working in through the ideal, you know, cause if you go too down in the hip thrust, you get a bit more hemi, uh, mm. you get a bit more hemi quad engagement. And if you go and so it's like, you just stay in that range where you contract, come down maybe halfway and come up, just to keep that constant tension. Um, what was the question? I'll just finish that off. <laughs> it's just uh, techniques and, and training things that you're doing to avoid the thickening yeah. of the midsection. Mm. So honestly, what, what, what got me into competing, wanted to compete in classic was in 2015, I was on a powerlifting style type training and I blew out my discs, my spine, my L4, my L5 in the gym. I was out of training. I couldn't actually train properly for about six months. And the surgeon said, the orthopedic surgeon told me that you can't powerlift anymore and you probably have to drop the weights. But obviously, that's not a that's not something you tell not someone who loves the sport. So I started rehabbing myself slowly, slowly, physiotherapy and just trying things out and etc. And in that time, I actually and I know it's going to sound real cliche, but I bought those um those like rubber waist trim uh yep they're called the waist trimmers yep, yep. those ones yep. like just a Velcro one. And what I found was, and for everyone listening, um, it wasn't that the waist trimmer. Uh, the, uh, the waist trim I kept made you just have a vacuum and a tight waist. But what I found was what I learned during that experience was that it reminded me constantly to hold my core in tight. Mm -hmm. So what, it got to a point where when I started rehabbing, and this was back in 2015, when I started rehabbing doing exercises, example, if I'm going to pull the dumbbells off the rack, before I pull the dumbbells off the rack, I actually vacuum and hold the core tight and I'll do the whole set vacuuming and holding the core tight. Therefore, it keeps that constant tension holding the waist. And even until today, um, with training stuff, yes, I do keep the belt on as well, especially yeah. when we're going to be pumping some heavy weights, etc. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'll always remind myself in the session, like if I see the waist coming out a bit, I'll pull it in. And even though it might sacrifice a bit from, you know, the concentration, mm -hmm. at least you're holding it tight. And, you can, and that will also reflect when you get to the stage because on stage in classic, you got to keep that waist yeah. in the whole time. Yeah. So it's like if you're doing a bicep curl and you're not going for a full on vacuum, but you're just holding a bit of tightness there. When it comes to stage, you can easily vacuum and hit a front double by mm -hmm. yeah, you should, yeah. And obviously doing vacuums in between sets sometimes. So like I said, I'll do the ab work two to three times a week. And sometimes for fun between sets, I'll be like, ah, oh, if you're a bit bloated or something, just pull in vacuums, hold 10 to 30 seconds and hold and just repeat that throughout the session. Not structured into my training program, but it's definitely there. Yeah. Well, there's some, there's some really quite intricate subtleties about um, the way you're training and things that, that, that I had no idea of. And I think um, from that, what I take is that if someone's going to get into a particular class, be it whatever it is, in this case, if it's classic bodybuilding, you really need to be talking to the right people to, to make sure you maximize your performance on stage. 100%, 100%. Like, and also for classic, like you gotta, you gotta realize like, there's no point having overpowering front delts, but you need side and rear for the back shots. You need a lot more lower lat engagement. So you have that taper structured in to match the waist. You need more outer quad sweep rather than the, rather than the teardrops overdeveloped. You know what I mean? And it just goes like that. So, you got to just keep all that in mind when you're training and just looking, obviously you need everything built, but you got to keep, you got to keep specific eyes on your body. And I do that every four weeks. I have a reevaluation of a physique check-in and we see what we need to push further and further. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, what we'll do is uh, we'll pull up your Instagram and so uh, we can have a look at some of these photos from the weekend. Yep. No worries. No worries. So for those um, people out there that, that aren't following Yusuf, here's his page, Yusuf Yufi. And there's the photo. How good was it taking that photo with the card in front of you, mate? Oh, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. At that point, to be honest, I was very flattened out. And you, I, I, I noticed that in the photos as well, like the detail in the legs and stuff started fading away. But I'm like, you know what? 
bang, just do it. Because yeah. um, at this point, I was actually really exhausted. Like, yeah. mm. I was, I still haven't drank. My last water intake was um, about 6 p.m. the night before. And that was a good quality lineup you had there uh, for the overall for that class. One hundred percent, very, yeah. very, very, very challenging lineup. Um, really made us work for it in terms of posing and stuff, and trying to just hold that package throughout the day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it just raises a question. Really, something I hadn't thought about. Um, you know, and we've seen it a lot recently in, in in the pro shows where guys have come on stage at the pre judging and look phenomenal. And they've faded throughout the day. And, and I don't know what the trick is to, you know, how do you manage that fatigue and flattening out and the, the competition fade that we're starting to see? Yep, yep. So what I found is, like, for example, myself at Nationals that day, um, what really helped was after the morning show, by the time I got on stage uh, in the pre-judging, I started fading away a bit. So I put in a bit more carbs and just dry carbs because I had to uh, suck in the water a bit, out of it. And a uh, good tip I find, and I actually told this to a few guys backstage, and you should have seen us at Nationals, is try and sleep. Eat and try and sleep. Uh, don't really talk. Don't really exhaust yourself. Stop moving around, because all that stuff will just get some water retention coming in in the, you know, in the skin layers, etc. So pretty much after pre-judging, I went backstage. Um, I just went outside to get some food. Uh, nothing, nothing, just real dry, like mm -hmm. bread or dry rice or something, a bit of chicken, and just went backstage, ate it, and then just put my head down for an hour. And I, I, I found that helped really pull in. Um, so for my posing routine and stuff, um, it really did work. But I felt like I probably should have gone, and this was what I got feedback, maybe something a bit more aggressive with the food, from what um, then my stuff was telling me, mm -hmm. just to just to fill out a bit more, just because of my frame and my size, just probably need something to load a bit better in that time and just held it. Cause I think lying down and standing up and doing the posing routine burned through the whole food that I had after the pre-judging, yeah. Isn't it, isn't it amazing that just the, that little things like talking, moving around, going to see someone having a yak, catching up with some of your people that have come to see you is enough to completely change the way you look on stage. Isn't it such a crazy sport? 100%, 100%. And that's, that's honestly why I love this sport. It's like, as, as being a pharmacist, I love all the science that goes into it, from the training, the eating, you know, regulating your water and stuff, your supplements, etc. And actually, I, I got given that tip um, from Denver and from Mo, who told me, like, I got some advice from them. And they just said, you know, when you're backstage at national stuff, especially if you're contending, you know, for, for the pro card and stuff, you just you need to stay relaxed. You need to stay at ease. You just want to, you know, just relax, eat, don't talk, don't exert yourself, don't exert energy. Keep that for the stage and back. Keep that for the stage and back. So I actually, Nationals, I just put my headphones in, um, lay down so no one really talks to you, put something over my eyes, just played some music. Or like I was listening to um, uh, Quran, like the Holy Bible, but we're Muslims, so we have the Quran, just yep. to soothe, soothe the body, get the nice. spiritual relaxation going. And just, yeah, listen to the words of God and just lift your feet up and just try and get rid of the time, yeah. Sorry, Mike, I interrupted hey, uh, you earlier. Yeah, no, that's right. I, I've got about three or four really quick questions because I just want a little bit of context here. What's your height and weight here? Over here, um, I would say, so my height is 178. So that's 5'11 or 5'10. I'm not too sure. Oh. Um, weigh-in, so I, the weigh-ins, I was at 94 on the dock. Um, I think over here I was about 95.5 to 96. And uh, without getting too involved, because I know it's a very involved process, uh, did you deplete and load? And if so, uh, how long did you load for? And sort of ballpark, how many grams of carbs did you take in? Yep. So I, um, I depleted for after Y Caddos, obviously, we got really lean. So after that, we just had, um, we started the depletion. Well, actually, it was different for nationals because because we were already in condition and leanness and the feedback from YCAD was to come in fuller. We actually bumped my food up, kept cardio the same, put a bit more fats and a bit more carbs just to help train harder to keep fullness in the muscle. Um, and what actually ended up happening was was doing that process, my weight dropped under the peak week weight that I had for YCAD. So we had to go a bit more aggressive. So I actually, rather than loading the day before and stuff, we started loading... 
um, from the Tuesday night for the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so from the Tuesday night, we went to we went to 600 grams of carbs for that day, for Tuesday. For Wednesday, we had about maybe another six to 700. And then, um, sorry, on the Wednesday. Thursday, I dropped a kilo and a half after doing that. So we had to go a bit more aggressive. <laughs> so on the Thursday, I think we went up to 1,000 grams of carbs to load. Um, that put the weight up a bit. And then on Friday, we started slowing down. And then once we cut the water and stuff, had a nice sleep on Friday night. Saturday, I lost two and a half kilos when I woke up in the morning. So the body burned through it again. So had to load a bit more in the morning. And then, yeah, that's why in the morning of the show, I was, very, I was on point. And I tried to hold that, but I didn't want to have too much food on the day because I had to hold the waist in. And I don't want to really blow out, especially trying to hold the vacuum. So it became a became a gamble between do you want to come in drier and fuller or do you want to keep that v taper going very strong and because that's a strong point for me i went with that option and that was the feedback i got from coaching stuff just to try and not over bloat you know if you're a little bit flat and stuff at least you got the symmetry and the flow and the lines there well good hey look um, sorry i just looked at this photo and you've um you've joined an elite little club there yeah <laughs> So you got yeah, the, yeah, yeah, got the Olympian, good. Olympian on one side, and uh, and uh, I think Shane's going to do his um, pro debut twenty twenty one by the sound of things at the pro am. I believe so, but but um, he has mentioned twenty twenty one. We'll be talking to him at some point soon, so it'd be interesting to hear. So yeah, very uh, elite little club there. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, because I, I know that the Pro-Am uh, next year, I think in March, they are having a classic pro show. Wow. Yeah, um, I'm obviously not going to do that because I'm just going to take time off to fo- give my yeah. body a break and, you know, build in so I can come back and do damage in the pro stage and just work on the business and family and just life matters and stuff. You know, got to balance bodybuilding with life. But yeah, I would love to be on stage with those two guys one day and all the other classic pros in NZ and see how we can stand up and stuff. Everyone's, I mean, very supportive, very nice. And the scene in the, the scene in New Zealand is growing. I really like it. And you guys are doing an amazing job. So. Well, appreciate yeah. it, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah. I, I've noticed that, you know, it's it very much, um, you know, Mike Kingsworth talked about, um, you know, years ago, there was a lot of negativity and I guess it's the competitive nature and things, but now people seem to be coming on board, willing to share information, supportive. And you, you I guess you've always noticed with the, the, the higher level guys and particularly the pros, they've all got each other's back. They're there for each other. Um, they support each other. So yeah, you're, you're in that little group now. So that's really cool. Really cool to see. Yeah, man, it's a, it's a good feeling. And I fully agree. Like, you do see it a lot more in the in the amateur division than you do see in the pros because, I don't know, like, there's a, let's, let's be, I've got I've got a bit of eyes and a bit of negativity at Waikato's and stuff. But, hey, end of the day, just focus on yourself, you know. Don't don't yeah. pay attention to the negativity and all the bullshit and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, man. Head down, head down and let the work show, you know, do the talking. Exactly. 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 Tell me about that photo, mate. I really want to know. Honestly, man, um, I was standing there and my heart rate was a bit high. Um, you know, I could just see my family and stuff in the corner and my wife and stuff. And like when they announced it, you know, I was thinking about this all of prep and like since I was 15 years old and yeah, it just broke down, broke down to tears, shed a few tears. It was very emotional because I'm like, we're now moving on to the next chapter. It's just a reality, yeah. Yeah. a dream just slapped you in the face. Great so, trailer. Yeah. Great photo. It says a lot, that photo. Really does. <laughs> yeah, and Mo there. So you got, you know, you got a good support network. Who's the lovely lady? That's my wife. Uh, so, that's my wife, Ashna. She's um she is the she is the anchor to to Team Taiwan. She's the one that does all the marketing, the business, the websites, um, all that stuff. She does all the organizing, organizing my clients' timetables and everything. So honestly, I couldn't do this without her. She's my number one support person. Um, love her to bits. So yes, it's time right. to have two years off, off season and just have some fun and relax and yeah, see how we go. Big shout that's out. Big shout that, out. Yeah, yeah, that's a theme we found uh, with, uh, with Dan last night as well. 
uh, when they refer to, oh, we've done this and when we've achieved and when we planned. Uh, so, and you started out with that as well, you know, when we visualized this and when we achieved this, it's all we, it's all team. So, uh, I mean, obviously there's you and your wife and Denver, is there uh, anybody else that you want to kind of uh, oh, there's, there's, take there's an a opportunity whole, to think? There's a whole list. We got Denver and his beautiful wife, Jess. Um, they're amazing. I got my wife, I got my family, my parents, my sisters, my brothers, all supportive. I mean, my parents, the last couple of weeks, they pretty much made all my meals for me because they knew I was exhausted and trying to balance the clients and work. So they would, I would just give them the money and they would go and cook my fish. They were cooking 15 kilos of fish a week. So their catch was actually incorrect. Um, and my little brother would come and drop the food off. Um, my best mate from high school, Samir, would always come and check up on us. He would come to the gym with us and push us and remind us what we're working for. Um, my clients, Robin, Gia, et cetera, who's competing this weekend actually at the GPCs, um, they would help us out. My sister-in-law, in-laws, checking up on us, helping us shave because we're Arab. <laughs> 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 um, so yeah, and then the team, Dennis, Dennis who got his pro card, him and his missus, Emily, Rex, we used to all train together throughout the whole of prep. Um, big, big yeah, support. Gonna, I can keep going on. Yeah, now you're going you're gonna to worry about missing someone out now, aren't you? I, I know. That's why I'm just like, there's many more to come, but I think, yeah, that's, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep that there for now, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Here he is. Boss man. Denver. Right. <sighs> so, I guess, you know, the, the big question that's sort of on everyone's lips uh, is what's the future plans? Where where do you see yourself? What's your, your ultimate goal? And when do you see yourself stepping onto that stage? And, and you know, what are some of the, the milestones that you're going to be ticking off in the future? Um, so the plan moving forward is, um, so I plan to have two years off, as I mentioned earlier, two years off as an off season. Um, just to really grow. I want to come in maximizing my weight class. I mean, from last year to this year, my my stage weight went up about six to seven kilos, which yes. yeah, yeah. required a lot of hard work. So I'm guessing um, in the pro stage for my weight division, for my height in the class B, the cutoff weight, I think is 98. I think they push it to 100. So the plan now is to off season, get big, get nicely bigger over that weight limit mm. but you know change up the body composition get tighter and hold it and hold it and hold it getting leaner in that body weight and then cut down and hopefully do damage in about two years and in that time just work on the business uh work on family and stuff see where we go and yeah who knows might awesome. have a kid too who knows <laughs> <laughs> often happens in the, you know when you have a bit of a downtime you know these things do happen as you know 100 percent, 100 percent. um so yeah hopefully we'll see how we go that's the plan um who knows how, well, how it's gonna go but that's what we got planned for now so yeah just gonna awesome. keep hey, working look, hard and pray to god and hope all works well awesome man hey look i'm i've been really really stoked to get you on board bro i really wanted to have a chat to you because i saw you on stage and i didn't know you i know most of the competitors never got to speak that speak to you prior to this so really cool getting to know you and um from us at south pacific muscle we wish you all the best and we're going to be following you along following the journey and um, no doubt we'll talk again soon awesome and thank you guys for having me honestly it's very exciting when you uh, hit me up i was like <laughs> keen and i love what you guys are doing by the way like honestly first people to do this in the country and i think it really needs it just to really spread and open the community so thank you guys and thank you for the opportunity and thanks for having us tonight and i hope it all went well and yeah cool, bro. Cool. you guys coming on to make it absolutely you, it's you guys coming on the show to make it right nobody oh, really I, wants to listen to me and Nate. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man, you, you guys are all good you guys are entertaining but yeah, yeah i mean you guys are the ones organizing it so you got to give yourself some gratitude so thank you very much Appreciate it. Right. Thanks very much. And um, to all our people out there, stay safe, look after yourself, share this with your friends, get on board, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and we'll keep pumping out the volume and, and getting these people on board that want to spread their knowledge. So some really cool tips tonight. So if you can take away a handful of things from this, it's an hour of your time well invested. So from me, stay safe. See you guys. Thank you for having me.